Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football and the Rich keep getting richer as Michigan lands another transfer, Josiah Stewart from Coastal Carolina. This dude is an absolute baller. You take a look at what he did in his first two years at Coastal Carolina. A guy that wasn't recruited by many big-time schools ends up going to Coastal Carolina, does absolute work for two years, and that was between Michigan and USC to land him, and Michigan pulls it out. Dill, before we get into it, I just want to say thank you guys for the support, especially the Michigan fans. It's been just an absolute awesome last 12 months to be a Michigan fan, obviously beating Ohio State twice, going to the college football playoffs twice, and Michigan just keeps improving the roster and the direction where this program is going with just how tight this team is, the brotherhood that's developing. We talked a little bit about it with Miles Hinton in the committing last night. Um, something's brewing. And if you guys are a Michigan football fan or just a college football fan in general, consider subscribing to the channel. We really do appreciate all the support. And the best way to support the boys out is to subscribe. We appreciate that for real. Dill, I'm going to kick it off to you. How are you feeling about this? I mean, this is just another one of those transfer moves that I think everyone's excited about. A position where we took a step back for sure from last year, of course, losing Ojabo and Hutchinson. And, and the edge play was solid at Michigan this year, but I think you saw at times, notably in the Ohio State game, there just wasn't enough on the edge and enough firepower. And you got to hope this guy can bring it. And, and if we can up that part of the game, and again, I think they're keeping the core of everything else at Michigan, I – yeah, this just continue to be a very dangerous team for the next year. And and we're continuing to be uh, – I mean, we're continuing to add depth at important positions. The offensive line is something that Michigan – You, if you want to have a successful Michigan football team, the offensive line has to be elite. Back-to-back Joe Moore award-winning offensive lines. And then we go out and get two of the highly highest-ranked guys in the portal to add depth, to add experience to that offensive line. And the second part, the trenches on the defensive side of the ball – Specifically that edge position, we were talking about certain position groups that we wanted to see maybe Michigan go in and target guys. We said interior defensive line, but I mean, on the edge, we have a lot of really, really good players. It's not as much of a, a star studded group as, as the 2021 team with Hutchinson and Ojabo, but you look at guys potentially coming back and what this edge room and this pass rush room might look like. I mean, it's loaded. You probably lose Mike Morris to the NFL, but Braden McGregor, who was coming on extremely strong at the end of the season, he's probably back. Jalen Harrell, I would assume, it is going to be coming back. Yabi Yoki, uh, been saying that he's going to come back. And then you have a guy, a true freshman, and Derek Moore, who you can tell he's going to be a stud. And now you add another young guy in Josiah Stewart, who you take a look at what he was doing at Coastal Carolina as a true freshman. 16 tackles for a loss, 13 sacks. Last year, 10 tackles for a loss, four and a half sacks. I mean, this dude has proven production at the collegiate level, and then he's going to bump up to play at Michigan, get coached by one of the better defensive coordinators and defensive line coaches in the country. Very, very excited what they can do with this young cat. I know, and it's uh, that's what I, I think people are excited about at Michigan. It's just, again, you're just kind of reloading it. And I think you're people are getting a little antsy about it just naturally because the 23 class – I don't know. People are saying it's not it's not highly ranked, obviously. I think they're like around 16 or something last I looked, according to 24-7, which isn't like bad. I think most schools would be really happy with it. But again, I, I, I think this is doing something to ask – I don't want to even try that word, but uh, like mellow the concerns people might have about what's going on on the recruiting front, on the NIL front, because again, they're landing some big-time players – that are highly, highly coveted, whether that be the transfer portal, whether that be recruiting, we'll see what the 2024 recruiting class ends up bringing. I don't, I don't know. I think people got way overblown about the NIL because of what Miami's done and what maybe some other teams have done, but I, I still think Michigan's in a pretty good spot. And on a note from the recruiting, again, we talked about this a little talking about miles Hinton last night, Michigan has kind of taken it more of an approach of finding guys that are going to fit their system. When Jim first came in, I mean, the recruiting was great. Top five a couple of times, guys like Donovan Peoples-Jones, uh, Nico Collins. I mean, some studs who were very, very high. Chris Hinton probably could be another guy on that list. Rashawn Gary. Guys who were headlined dudes. And not to say they weren't good for Michigan, but it seems like Michigan the last couple of years at the high school level has been more focusing on getting guys who are going to fit the system and kind of 
those who stay will be champions. And we're you look at every team across the country bleeding transfers out of their out of their team. In Michigan, yeah, you'll have some guys transfer because they want to go and find playing time, and that makes sense. That's what the transfer portal is for. You're not seeing many big name contributors from Michigan hitting the transfer portal, and I think or that's a product school. for B contributors. Like I think you could argue Eric All, Cade McNamara, like they were contributors for the year they were contributing. But if you're just looking at the way it's sh- shaken out now, it, it you kind of lying if you're saying those two are going to be a big part of the future in any shape sense of the way. Certainly, Cade, he'd already been beaten out. I mean, Eric All's at a position Michigan's are recruiting really well, developing really well, and, and you see what Colson Loveland's doing as a freshman. It's just the guys who are leaving are getting straight phased out. They're not leaving for greener pastures, I don't think. Yeah, and I – I think there's another aspect that you're getting guys who want to be Michigan Wolverines and not necessarily like, I want to go get playing time so I can go to the NFL. I mean, I think Mike Barrett or Mikey Sandstrom is probably the, the best example where, the, I mean, Mike Barrett was a, a solid football player for us, but didn't really play much until his fourth, fifth year. I mean, on special teams, he played a little bit, but he waited. And then when he got a shot, I mean, he's been one of the best linebackers, one of the best players on the defensive side of the ball for Michigan this year. Mikey Sandstrom, you can say the same thing. And, these are two guys that weren't very highly touted at, out of high school, but you're getting guys who want to stay. They want to be on this Michigan football team, and we're developing those guys for four or five years, and uh, it's hard to argue that it's not working with the results that Michigan has had the last two years. Yeah, and you could say the same thing about the offensive line. I mean, you see guys waiting their turn, Karsten Barnhart, Ryan Hayes, guys who – even Trevor Keegan to an extent, like – Guys who sat for two, two, three years in some cases, even four for the Barnhart and Trente Jones, and now they're they're showing they're they're really good players, or I guess three for those two guys. But still, guys who weren't jumping ship early because of no playing time, but but they're developing the pros. Like I think Carson Barnhart, he's going to be a pro. I wouldn't, or at least to get a pro opportunity. He's not. I, I don't know. I think what Michigan's doing. I think everyone. Yeah, again, I, coming off the heels of that 2020 year, it's just it's so crazy to see where Michigan is today and, and what they're doing. But, yeah, it's really exciting. And what I think is another interesting note is, I mean, we've landed kind of four big time. I mean, four of these transfers, all four transfers we've taken, like we're getting quantity. Like this four transfers is more than we brought in all of last year, and it's still very early on in the portal process. Um, the Two of these guys, Miles Hinn and Henderson, probably one and done at Michigan. But you're getting two guys like Josiah Stewart is going into his third year. Ernest Hausman, the number one kid, by the way, when 24-7, we can go take a look. The number one rated player in the transfer portal, Ernest Hausman, who's going to Michigan. He's got two more years that he has to be in Michigan until he can even go to the NFL. So, I mean, you're getting guys who are young who are going to be able to get kind of that Michigan culture and brotherhood going and, and get developed in that Michigan scheme. I mean, Josiah Stewart, Ernest Hausman are probably not going to be one and done at Michigan, which kind of – in a way, it's a little bit like high school recruiting. You getting guys young and, and being able to get your hands on them and, and develop them. Yeah, no, this is huge what Michigan's doing. I think I'm really excited for next year. So we talked about it a little bit last night. Open up the discussion again now that we added another guy through the portal. Positions, I mean, in my mind, I still think cornerback is a spot that we I want to get a little deeper in. I think that's like from a depth standpoint, Will Johnson's going to be a dog. Mikey Sanstro's coming back, but – the other boundary cornerback after green leaves probably open. You might want to get some more competition there. What's another position group that you might want to see developed or, or maybe targeted by Michigan in the staff through the portal? The only one I can honestly think of is a little bit cornerback. That's I, I don't want to see any other guys. Cause again, I don't want to chase out young guys at wide out or at, at safety. I mean, you got guys like Keon Sab and Zeke Barry. Like, I want to see those guys stay. I want to see them develop into pros at Michigan. So I don't want to chase them out for, like, a year. I, the only spot that makes any sense for at, at all is corner to me. Yeah, I think one 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 spot I would look at maybe is also defensive tackle. We talked a little bit about it. There are a couple of good defensive tackles. Mason Graham looks phenomenal, but uh, Cam Good, not really. We took him in the portal last year, didn't really hit. You have a guy like Anthony Grant. I, from from my standpoint, when you're dealing with guys who are that big, Mozzie Smith's probably out the door of the NFL, I want big dudes who you're going to be able to roll in because, again, those guys need breaks. They need gas. Uh, Mason Graham and Anthony Grant are two young guys who I'm confident will develop into very, very good college football players. Mason Graham probably already there. 
that's probably another position that I might look to add. But right now, I feel like we've addressed all of our needs that we really need through the portal. And you look at this 2023 team and and looking ahead to next year, there's not many spots on this depth chart where I'm like, oh, this is this ain't good. No, that's that's for sure. And that's why I don't want to see them like hammer the portal like like a USC had to do because USC had to do it. And and they were there were no young guys to chase out. There was no development at that program for many years. And I what do you what do you what are you gonna do? Again, I don't want to get into that mode of chasing guy. I don't want to chase guy young guys out who are gonna be good players because there have been I don't, I don't know, just what you've seen from the development standpoint at Michigan. I it's that's why you get a little nervous. Like if they added another offensive lineman, I'd start to get a little like uh, like I, I don't know. I don't want Nell Hottie to leave. I don't want Greg Crippen to leave. So I that's the one that's the one thing I, I don't think they're in right now, but if that's why I don't want to necessarily see four or five more guys, maybe like one. And I don't think Michigan has proven not. I mean, that's not what they did last year. I don't think it's what they'll do this year. I think they're just adding spots where, I mean, if you can get a guy to add depth at the offensive line or that defensive line position, they're going to do it. And then Ernest Hausen is just a dog. I mean, I don't even think linebacker was a spot that we needed much, much competition in, but when you have a chance to go out and get a guy who played at such a high level as a true freshman in the big 10 at Nebraska, you got to go out and get you, you, go. If you. If he had any interest, he had to be in play. Absolutely. Now, I think that's the the most important thing Michigan is doing is they're not just going after quantity. They're just not chasing bo- like crazy amount of bodies to come into this come into this new roster. They're going out and getting guys that uh, you played at a high level. You're proven. I mean, all these guys are top forty in the transfer portal. When I'm saying top forty in the 2023 transfer portal. You are a dang good football player. There's a lot of good football players in this transfer portal right now, and we got four out of the top 40. I mean, Michigan is absolutely – the number one in the rankings, but they're absolutely crushing it in my mind between, like, the process of how they're doing it. And I just – obviously, we have two more games to take care of this year, but you're looking towards 2023, and it's that's how you build a dynasty is looking at how you can get better for next year, how you can get better for two years down the road. Michigan – is doing that. Very, very excited for the future again. Appreciate you guys checking us out as usual, especially if you're Michigan fans. Subscribe to the channel. We talk a lot of Michigan ball. We appreciate you guys and all the support you guys have shown. We'll talk to y'all later. Peace.